you ever wondered where concrete comes from? Today we're at one of our job sites where we're going to show you how we're making the sand and rock required to build the infrastructure right here in the Red River Valley. Let's go check it out. Section of the high wall has two very good examples of what's good and what's bad about this mine site. The good part, look at all this beautiful rock that is sloughed down from the top from that section of the deposit. However, the bad part and the reason why we need to wash this aggregate is right behind us where you see that thick seam of sedimentary clay that cannot go into concrete. So once we crush this down to size, that'll all get washed out in the wash plant. So this 988H we're feeding with, um, I remember the first one we had purchased, it was such a, an anomaly compared to our normal fleet, we were running 980 size loaders. But now when you get into larger scale projects like this, it's a necessity because these guys in a shift by shift basis are doing about 6,000 tons of material plus or minus a few hundred. So what that equates to with an eight yard bucket is somewhere in the vicinity of 45 buckets an hour. So almost every minute on the minute, they need to be grabbing a bucket and getting it to the feeder to maintain production speed. You couldn't do that with a 980 size loader. You need to have one of these 88s and that's why they're just such a huge staple in maintaining a high production operation like this. After the material hits the crusher in the screen box, it's then transported across our scale and onto this Superior Trailblazer conveyor, which is a 500 foot overland conveyor, which helps us get the material from the mine face to the final processing area by the wash plant. After the material comes off the trailblazer, it hits a final series of conveyors before it's stacked under the stockpile. From the mine face to the stockpile is a distance of about 1,300 feet on this site. We're standing at the base of the stockpile where the crushing portion is finished. All this material is one inch minus, and now it's ready to be washed. The 982 is gonna come, scoop a bucket and bring it over to our tunnel conveyor where it processes further into the wash plant. Standing on top of the hill where we have a really good look at our wash plant layout. This is a little bit more complex than a typical wash plant like we saw in previous videos, but we'll break it down for you piece by piece. To start, we have our tunnel conveyor rather than a traditional hopper because this allows the loader operator to surge raw material on top and free up time to go move finished product with the loader. 
From there, the material is conveyed up to the wet deck where it's washed and segregated by size. There's three rock products here. From the top, we're starting with an oversized rock, which is more so quality control. That'll get crushed and recycled later. Secondarily, we have a three quarter inch concrete rock. That's what we're truly after. We also have a P-Rock product that gets mixed in with certain concrete blends. From there, the two fines products we're manufacturing are a washed sand, which is coming out on the very, very far north side. And then we also have fines, which is your 200 mesh sediment that we're recovering with the UFR that avoids it from going into the ponds. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Here it is. This is our final product, a wash three quarter inch concrete aggregate. If you don't have this, you just have sludge. This is a structural backbone to any quality ready mix you're going to see. This is just our oversized rock pile. We implement this as a quality control procedure. All this is is material that maybe slipped through the crusher and didn't get sized correctly, this prevents us from getting any oversized material into the concrete. We'll recycle this into the crusher at a later date. Right here is our 3 8 inch pea gravel. This is utilized in certain mixes as a structural intermediary to bridge a gap between the sand and the rock. After the sand hits the screen deck, it goes into our fine material screw or our sand screw where it gets churned with water and the fines float out. The sand is taken up and placed into the dewatering screen where it vibrates the moisture out so you have a very dry sand product getting conveyed out into the final stockpile. So behind me is something new we've added to this system for 2022. This is a UFR, or an Ultra Fines Recovery System. The intent behind it is to capture some of the fines that would float into the ponds and process them, dry them out, and place them here in a small stockpile. We're still working out the kinks to try and optimize the efficiency, but we've seen a good result with the longevity of our pond. So this material actually used to be that vein of sedimentary clay that we saw on the crushing end of things. After we wash it and churn it up and pull it out with the UFR, we're left here with this muck that otherwise would end up in the pond. scheme of this project, just based on the resource, we're left with a lot of sand. It's washed sand that can be used in concrete, but there's a high volume of it nonetheless. We've had to implement some strategies and get creative with our piling because there is so much. We've implemented another 500 foot trailblazer conveyor, we've implemented a telestacker to get up on top of the pile, and then another stacker to stretch it beyond. There's just a, a large amount of sand and not a huge footprint to put it on. 